Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Michael Carrick has decided to step down as Manchester United's first team coach. Michael Carrick as Manchester United's interim manager. He won two games out of three. The other game he drew. So credit to Michael Carrick, he did well. Of course, Gar Carrick won his final game in charge tonight against Arsenal. Manchester United beat Arsenal 3 2. Manchester United's next game is Crystal Palace. That is on Sunday. And it will be Ralph Rangnick's first game in charge of Manchester United. Recently, Rangnick was granted his work permit to begin his work as Manchester United's interim manager. Earlier on this week, Rangnick got announced as Manchester United's interim manager until the end of the season. Then after that, Rangnick will continue in a consultancy role for a further two years. Rangnick has been given a 100 million transfer budget for January. Rangnick wants a Maddu Haidara. A Maddu Haidara has a 33 million release clause. Rangnick also wants a Timo Werner reunion at Manchester United. There's also a couple of other players he wants. Uh, tonight, Rangnick was in the stands at Old Trafford. Before Manchester United, Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Lokomotiv Moscow. Manchester United will look to get a permanent manager at the end of the season. There's been a few names linked with the permanent role at Man United. Uh, not so long ago, there was rumours coming out about Roberto Mancini. He said Manchester United consider hiring Roberto Mancini instead of Mauricio Potticino. Roberto Mancini is in charge of Italy. He's been in charge of Italy since 2018. He's got a contract with Italy until 2026. Revert back to last summer... He won the European Championship with Italy. And around a decade ago, Mancini was the manager of Man City. And when he was the manager of Man City, he won the Premier League, the FA Cup and the Charity Shield. Uh, Potticino, as far as I'm aware, he's still the favourite to become Manchester United's next permanent manager. Uh, Potticino has said a few times now that he's very happy at PSG and he won't let the Man United rumours distract him. The other week it said PSG rejected Manchester United's approach to appoint Mauricio Potticino.
Reports were saying the other week, though, that Potticino is interested in the Man United job. And the Manchester Evening News came out and said that Man United are confident of appointing Mauricio Potticino as the next permanent manager. And it said Man United agreed to pay the £10 million compensation fee for Potticino. Revert back to when Man United sacked Mourinho. Man United should have got Potticino then, but the club decided to go with Solskjaer instead. He's a decent manager, is Potticino, even though he's hardly won anything. I think he has won a cup with PSG. He's got a full season left on his PSG contract. Potticino is proven in the Premier League because before he managed Tottenham and he managed Southampton. Uh, Eric Ten Hag, not so long ago, he was mentioned. It said Eric Ten Hag is said to be interested in the Manchester United job. And Ajax will not stand in his way if he wants to leave at the end of the season. It did mention that Eric Ten Hag is Manchester United's alternative target to Potticino. So if Man United can't get Potticino, they'll look to get Eric Ten Hag. And Brendan Rodgers, he's also been spoken a lot about as well. Manchester United have sat four permanent managers since Ferguson. You know, Manchester United sat David Moyes after 10 months. Man United finished seventh under the David Moyes era. He's one of the worst managers we've ever, we've ever had. Then Manchester United sat Louis van Gaal after two years, despite him winning the FA Cup. Then Man United sat Jose Mourinho after two and a half years. Mourinho did enjoy one good season at Man United because he won three trophies in his first season. And over a week ago now, Manchester United sat Solskjaer following the 4-1 defeat to Watford. As you all know, after the sacking, Solskjaer gave a farewell interview and he got emotional in that farewell interview, which is understandable because Solskjaer adores the club. You know, Solskjaer was part of the club for a long time. Don't forget, you know, he was Manchester United manager for almost three years. And he endured 11 years as a player for Man United. So that's almost 14 years in total. You know, despite Man United sacking Solskjaer over a week ago, all Manchester United fans still adore Solskjaer and they are still chanting his name, obviously reflecting on what he did for the club. Manchester United made the right decision sacking Solskjaer. I don't think the club really wanted to sack him, but the club had no choice but to sack him. Manchester United paid Solskjaer around £7.5 to sack him because revert back to last summer, he signed a three-year contract with an option of a further year and Solskjaer should have never been given that contract because I knew for a long time he was not the long-term manager for Man United. Solskjaer has no proven pedigree as a manager. Obviously, the club's He's managed in his managerial career. He managed Man United's reserve team. And then, of course, he managed Cardiff. His record at Cardiff was terrible. He got sacked from Cardiff because he got them relegated. Solskjaer enjoyed two spells at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles with them, but they're not a big club. And, of course, he managed Manchester United's senior squad. Uh, Solskjaer did not win a trophy when he was United manager and I did say he wasn't capable of winning trophies as a manager. Manchester United have not won a trophy since 2017. And when Solskjaer was United manager, this season was his third full season. And I did say at the start of this season that this season was always going to be massive for Solskjaer. And plus the pressure was on him because Man United enjoyed a very good summer transfer window. Man United made four signings. Three of the four signings were major signings. Last summer, Man United spent around £141 million and revert back to last summer 
when Solskjaer was United manager. He got very good backing from the board. The Glazers backed him. Ed Woodward backed him. Our director of football, John Murtough, backed him. And Darren Fletcher also backed him. So obviously, reflecting on that, Solskjaer ran out of excuses. But the expectations were far too high for Oli to exceed as United manager and basically Oli was in a position that he should have never been in. But Oli knew when he got appointed in as Man United manager that it was going to be a massive job. Not only a massive job, a difficult job as well because Oli was managing one of the biggest clubs in the world. You know, Solskjaer did get appointed in in December 2018 as the interim manager. Um, he was the interim manager for three months. You know, he did well as the interim manager, so the club decided to give him the job on a permanent basis back in March 2019. Uh, Solskjaer did sign 14 players when he was United manager. And Man United spent over £400 million under Solskjaer. Um, in his first full season, he got us to three semi-finals. He also got us a third-place finish. In his second full season, he got us to the EFL Cup semi-final, the FA Cup quarter-final, the Europa League final. That was his first major final as Man United manager. But unfortunately, he didn't win it. And he got us a second-place finish in his second full season. And don't forget when Man United had Ole. Man United went 29 games unbeaten away from home in the Premier League. And when Oli was United manager, he got rid of a lot of players. You know, he loaned players out. He also got rid of a lot of players permanently. Uh, but reflecting on the poor performances under Solskjaer, especially in the last few months of his managerial tenure, you know, not all of the blame stemmed from Solskjaer. You know, he was accountable for certain things. You know, his tactics and his team selections were questioned a lot, but there was also players that had to take responsibility for those poor performances as well. Uh, Manchester United have got very, very good players. And I'm hoping under Ralph Rangnick we can start to get the best out of these group of players. Because quite clearly, revert back to Solskjaer, you know, the players weren't playing for him, were they? You know, obviously they wanted Solskjaer sacked. You know, obviously we've got the best player in the world overall in Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, we saw Ronaldo score a brace tonight against Arsenal. Obviously, one of Ronaldo's goals came from a penalty. Obviously, Manchester United got the penalty because Martin Odegaard fouled Fred in the six-yard box. It was definitely a Stonewall penalty. You know, it was the correct decision. Reflecting on the two goals Ronaldo scored tonight, Ronaldo now has 12 goals in all competitions. Surprisingly, Ronaldo didn't start against Chelsea last Sunday. He started on the bench. You know, Ronaldo has won 32 major trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. Ronaldo's got a contract with Man United till 2023. There's an option of a further year. Ronaldo wears a number seven shirt. Man United got Ronaldo for 19.8 million, was it, with add-ons included. Uh, Ronaldo's got back-to-back -back awards as well since he re-signed. Don't forget, revert back to October. He got named Player of the Month for October. And revert back to September. He got named Premier League Player of the Month. Uh, Manchester United have got Mason Greenwood, you know, he's a talented player, you know, he hasn't been playing in recent weeks, you know, Greenwood was out with COVID at one point. 
I think Greenwood could be finding it hard now to get in there because Sancho's done really, really well recently. Uh, Sancho played tonight against Arsenal. He didn't score. But prior to the Arsenal game, he scored in his last two games because he scored against Chelsea and he scored in the 2-0 win against Villarreal. But it's good now that we're starting to get the best out of Sancho. Because revert back to Solskjaer, you know, wasn't getting the best out of Sancho because Solskjaer obviously played Sancho out of position and there was quite a few games Sancho didn't even play in under Solskjaer. But as for Greenwood, you know, he's scored, what, four goals in the league so far this season. Um, he scored a stunning goal in the 4-2 defeat to Leicester earlier on this season. At one point, though, Greenwood went a while without scoring. But I think he's been a revelation since he broke into our senior squad. Greenwood made his senior debut for United back in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven. So he's been part of the club for a long time. And last season, Greenwood signed a new four-year contract with Man United. And Manchester United have also got Marcus Rashford. You know, he's a good player as well. You know, Rashford played tonight against Arsenal. Don't think he was that good, but he still managed to get an assist in the game. Rashford played against Chelsea last Sunday. I thought he was poor in the first half, but improved in the second half. And he made an impact when he came on in the 2-0 win against Villa Real. Um, at one point, Rashford was out with a shoulder injury for a while and at one point he had to have an operation on his shoulder. Um, a lot of the time now, Rashford does play on the left wing. We need to keep him there because that's where he's mostly effective. There again, Rashford played up top alongside Sancho against Chelsea last Sunday. Rashford's been part of the club for a long time. He's been a United player since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. And Rashford's got a contract with the club until 2023. You've also got Edison Cavani. That's another good player. Uh, Cavani initially lost his place in the team with the club re-signing Ronaldo last summer. Uh, Cavani did play in the 3-0 win against Tottenham earlier on in the season. And he was playing alongside Ronaldo. That looks a very good partnership, Cavani and Ronaldo. Cavani's not available at the moment. You know, he's still out with injury. Uh, Cavani has under a year left on his Man United contract. Back in May, Cavani signed that one-year contract extension. Man United got Cavani on a free transfer from PSG. You know, this season has been his second full season at Man United. I'm hearing that Cavani is interested in making the move to Barcelona next summer when his contract expires. Man United have also got Bruno Fernandes. That's a very, very good player as well. You know, we saw him score tonight against Arsenal. It was a very good goal as well. Uh, the build-up to the goal was amazing. It was a lovely fit, flick from Fred to find Fernandes. Probably one of the best games Fernandes has had in a while because he has enjoyed poor games this season. Uh, Fernandez has been a Manchester United player for almost two years. Uh, we got Fernandez from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. He's one of the best signings we've made though since Ferguson retired. Uh, Fernandez has won awards at Man United, you know, reflecting on his good performances. Um, earlier on this season, Fernandez did make it clear that he wants to stay. Alright. 
Sorry about that. That he wants to stay at Manchester United. But when he first came to Man United, he said, I've come to Manchester to win trophies. Fernandes has got a contract to Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months. And you've also got Donny van der Beek. That's a good player as well. You know, didn't start tonight against Arsenal, but he did come on in the game. Um, I think there's a good chance van der Beek will leave in January unless, you know, van der Beek gets the opportunities he's been demanding under Ralph Rangnick. You know, revert back to Solskjaer, you know, van der Beek did not get enough opportunities and reflecting on that, he was frustrated. Van der Beek's been at Manchester United for over a year and a half. This season is his second full season at Man United. Man United got Van der Beek for forty million with add-ons included. He's got a contract with Man United till twenty twenty-five. There's an option of a further year, and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. Uh, Man United have also got Paul Pogba. You know he's a good player as well. Not only a good player, he's an imperative player. Uh, Pogba's not available at the moment. He's out with a thigh injury. I think Pogba's out for the rest of the year. Revert back to earlier on this season, Pogba got that thigh injury in France training. Well, I heard earlier on this season that Man United are prepared to sell Paul Pogba in the January transfer window. Moving on to Fred. Now, Fred, to his credit, has done really, really well in his last two games. You know, he played well tonight against Arsenal, got the assist for Bruno Fernandes, his goal. I think he also made a crucial block in the game. And of course, Fred won the penalty tonight. Fred played very well against Chelsea last Sunday. If you do remember rightly, Fred squandered a chance in that game that came from a mistake from Mendy. It's good to see Fred playing well because Fred's been inconsistent in a lot of games for Man United. I don't really rate him, to be honest with you. Manchester United got Fred for £50 million from Shakhtar Donetsk. And I've got to make an admission regarding Fred. I thought he was an exceptional player during his time in Ukraine. Uh, Man United, you know, I've got Tellez, you know, I really, really like Tellez. You know, Tellez has obviously played in our last three games because Luke Shaw's not been available. And Tellez did okay tonight. He played well against Chelsea last Sunday. He also played well in the game against Villarreal the other week. You know, Tellez only plays when Shaw's not available. Earlier on this season, Tellez was out with injury, wasn't he? The reason Man United brought Tellez in was to provide competition for Shaw. Man United got to Les for around 15.4 million with add-ons included from Porto. Man United have also got Luke Shaw. He's a good left-back overall, but he certainly hasn't proven how good he can be so far this season. Luke Shaw hasn't been available recently because obviously he's had a concussion. He got the concussion in the 4-1 defeat to Watford. I'm shocked all that Shaw's been poor this season because last season he was superb. I'm sure it's some point, you know, Luke Shaw will regain his form when he's back. Shaw's injury prone, which is a concern. Shaw's been at Manchester United for seven and a half years, so he's been a long-serving player. Shaw's got under two years left on his contract at Man United. And then you've got Harry Maguire. That's also a decent centre-half. You know, he's had his good games at Man United, but he's had a lot of games where he's been poor. I think Maguire's been poor in a lot of games this season, and obviously a lot of people have said he's been worse since he came back from that calf injury. Obviously, he played tonight against Arsenal, uh, just come back from suspension, didn't play against Chelsea because he was suspended. Maguire did get sent off in the game against Watford. Manchester United overpaid for Maguire, got him in a deal worth £80 million. So he's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive signing at the club. Uh, 
uh, towards the end of last season, if you do remember rightly, you know, Maguire had ligament damage in his ankle. Uh, Man United have also got Varane. That's a very good centre-half as well. Uh, but Varane's out with a hamstring injury at the moment. So, obviously, he played no part tonight. Uh, Varane's already endured two injuries since he signed for the club because, revert back to earlier on this season, he had a groin injury and he was out with that groin injury for a few weeks. But before he got these injuries, you know, Varane did well in a few games. He had a couple of games where he looked off the pace as well. Man United got Varane for £41 million. That was with add-ons included. Man United paid around £34 million up front. He's got a contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further year. Eric Bailly, he's also a good centre-half as well. You know, Bailly's made four appearances this season. Uh, Bailly didn't play tonight because obviously Maguire returned. I would have still started Bailly though, because Bailly put a very good performance out against Chelsea last Sunday. Bailly lost his place in the team a while ago, obviously with the signing of Varane in the summer transfer window. And Lindelof's obviously been preferred to Eric Bailly. My concern about Bailly is injury prone. Towards the end of last season, he signed a new contract with Man United till 2024 as an option of a further year. Bailly's been at Man United for like five and a half years now. Man United got Bailly from Villarreal back in 2016 for £30 million. Uh, and Wan Basaki, you know, he's good defensively, but the attacking side of his game is not so good. Uh, Basaka didn't play tonight against Arsenal, I don't know why. Obviously, Delot started ahead of him at right back. Uh, Basaka played against Chelsea last Sunday, uh, thought he was poor in that game, his positioning was poor, and of course, he was the one that conceded the penalty because he fouled Thiago Silva in the box. This season is Basaka's third full season at Man United. Got him for fifty million from Crystal Palace back in the summer of twenty nineteen. And you know, Man United have got David De Gea. That's a very, very good goalkeeper as well. You know, I've got to give De Gea credit, he's done really, really well this season. Uh, did well tonight again against Arsenal, you know, he made some good saves to deny Aubameyang. He also made a good save to deny Gabriel in the game. Revert back to the Chelsea game last Sunday, he made some good saves as well to deny Hudson and Oye and Rudiger. And the other week he made some good saves in the game against Villarreal. So there you go, you know, Man United have got a very good squad. Man United must have spent over a billion pounds since Ferguson retired, and we must have brought a good 43, 44 players in now since Ferguson retired. Um, I'm supposed to be doing my player ratings on this video, but I'll do it on my next video. I just wanted to give you the news on Carrot, so drop your comments, likes below on the channel, guys. If you do, consider subscribe as always, and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.